So this comes from Gone Collar Gone. Are we fucked? That's you, that's to you. Yeah, obviously a reference um, to uh, my "We are fucked" statement from two years ago after we lost. That to the may Celtics. as well have been when we like let Rashawn Holmes walk. Yeah, I mean, it could have been anything. <laughs> yeah, I um, I think they're mostly fucked. I, I do. I, I think the the chances of winning a title seem pretty distant to me. I, I remember, was it a year ago or two years ago when you said there was a, a 50% chance of them winning a title in the next four years and I had it five. at 10. Um, five, five years. Five years. I think it I, was, yeah. I they, still feel that that was right at the time. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter. Whatever. I, I guess. It's less than that now, but clearly. at the time I felt confident about that, which meant that still there's a 50% chance that they don't win the title. So, and if they had been even just slightly less incompetent, I think it'd still be pretty good. So the problem is, even if Embiid is the best he can be, they still need a fucking really awesome perimeter player. And it seems really difficult for me, unless they get lucky in a draft or something like that, that they acquire a player like that. To me, I'm not saying they should do this, but to me, the only real chance they have of winning a title is if they can trade Simmons for an elite or a high-level perimeter player. Because it seems to me that it, it's really tough to do it otherwise. So are we fucked? <sighs> not from being good and not from being like, you know, oh, you don't want to play this team, sort of like the Grizzlies were for so many years. But as far as winning a championship, I think think we're pretty fucked. So yep. I, dis- I disagree. I, I really think that there's, like, look, that, this is not me having confidence in the current regime, obviously. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously. They, they, they're all still there in a shocking admission of, we don't have any other good ideas. We're all going down with the ship. Mm-hmm. Um, even as they're watching, like, th- these playoffs have just been a real indictment on the Sixers as an organization. I honestly want, like... You know how there's the the graphic on the screen where it says like you know Lakers eighty nine, Heat eighty five. It should just say six or zero like the whole playoffs. Like for every team, <laughs> honestly, in baseball it should say six or zero. Like it should be everywhere. They should they should not. I mean every time anyone tweets about Jimmy, Mark Stein, whoever the fuck, they're like the Sixers man. Wow. Like every single time it happens, and I don't understand how they are still watching this and saying like no no we we're good we got it. We're, we're totally set. We're good. And, I may, and maybe maybe they're just hanging it all on, on Ben's injury and thinking that they could have competed more with, with Ben healthy. Obviously, I don't think it would have been a sweep if Ben, if ben was, uh, wasn't injured. But, but they would have lost. But they probably would have lost, yeah. Um, and to, like, I don't, I don't understand how, how there's, no, there's no comeuppance whatsoever. But I, I do think that it is easier to get a kind of player you're looking for that we all want a perimeter score like even like a even you know i think tyler hero is going to be a a good player at this point but tyler hero now like there are guys that can do like jordan if jordan clarkson was like the starting like guard on this team obviously he's not like the point guard type but he can penetrate a little bit he can shoot a little bit like just his movement and like and shakes continued development would open something up like i'm obviously not a jordan clarkson guy but, like, there are those kinds of players, and especially if, because you have Embiid and Simmons, and theoretically Horford and then Matisse and stuff, like, you have enough defense where if you get buy-in, you can, like, get by with a below-average defender. Like, there are so many guys in the league and in the world, the easiest skill to have is, like, I can go get a bucket and run around fast, and I'm willing to shoot threes quickly. Like, that's the, that is the most popular skill in the NBA. And the fact that the Sixers just don't have it is hard to do. Like, they, to avoid that kind of stuff, you have to try to do it. And so I don't think it's that hard to trade Josh for a player like that. And I definitely, you know I'm draft guy, I definitely don't think it's hard to draft a player with that kind of potential, especially in this draft. There's a lot of those kinds of guys if you're thinking like straight up like a point guard type of guy, there's plenty like Tyrell Terry and 
Kyra Lewis and well, isn't Tyrell Terry the guy they promised they would pick already? <laughs> no, that, that wasn't the guy that I heard that they promised. Oh. But the but he's a guy that they met with. I like Tyrell Terry. If they if they took him, I'd be very happy. Um, like a uh, Malachi Flynn. Like there's there's so many guys that are even guys I don't believe in, like Cole Anthony or Nico Mannion, who I'm, I'm less high on. But like there's there's th- that skill set is there. It's the easiest skill set to come up with. Because that's what, you know, it's, hey, go be like pretend Steph Curry. Like, there's so many guys that could do that. And that's all, that's what they need. And so I think if, I think if Doc gets buy in and, and Simmons and Embiid, like, do, you know, obviously have to keep getting better. But all of that stuff, I think, is, is not hard to do with a competent front office. Now, they don't have one, but hopefully they can, like, you know, back themselves into, you know, guessing right for once. The difference between what you think and I think is that I think, like, yes, you could go get, uh, uh, like, you know, K- even though the KCP thing was a, like a LeBron long play, they paid him like $20 million the yeah. first year or whatever. Like, even though you could, like, you look at KCPs and Kendrick Nunn's and like all these guys, Lou William, yaddy, yaddy, all these guys that like um, can shoot and will shoot quickly and whatever. I still think even if they had them all over the place, like you watched that game last night and it was still coming down to LeBron or, or Butler. Like it, it still comes down to a guy on the perimeter who is elite. And I just... Maybe. I mean, yo, in the Jokic, Jokic like proved that that's not always the case. And AD certainly got... Well, well wait has, a minute. Jamal Murray times. was fucking awesome. Oh, no, totally. I'm not saying yeah. you don't need that. I'm just saying like yeah. there, were, there were times in the game in, those, in that series when in both in the Denver Hole playoff run where Jokic was like the guy demanding the ball and you had yeah. to double him out of the post and he's kicking it out to shooters. But they also didn't win a championship. I'm not saying that they won't, and but like, but I think the, the world is that if they do win a championship, Jamal Murray, we will consider as a, at least Bradley Beal level, like a, a, an excellent perimeter offensive player. And they just don't have one. And I think they're gonna have to get lucky to get one. So. Oh, 